Thanks for tuning in guys to the Pested Lawn Judge and today we're going to go over my quick guide to leveling a lawn. When it comes down to leveling a lawn, there's two different types. One I like to refer to as smoothing, kind of like butter on toast, you're smoothing the surface. The other type is when you are raising the level to make everything exactly level. When it comes to raising the level of an area, if it's gonna be more than about an inch and a half, my suggestion is don't go with the smoothing out process. I'd much rather rip the Band-Aid off. I've got two links in the description of the video. One is how to raise the height and put seed on top of it. And the other is taking a sod cutter, removing the sod, boosting the soil up, and then putting the sod down. There's a few tools that you're gonna to wanna to have when it comes to leveling a lawn. A wheelbarrow is an absolute must. When you start trucking the dirt in, they're just gonna put it in your driveway and you need to get the materials onto the lawn. I like those big scoop shovels because it makes it easier to put more in the wheelbarrow. Now, a flat pan shovel is really nice to have, especially when we get to the part where we're throwing the sand out. We're gonna need a couple of rakes, starting with the bow rake to knock down the hills of sand that we put out. Once we get to the part to smoothing in the sand, you're gonna need a tool called a level lawn or a landscape leveling rake. I prefer a level lawn, but you can easily find a landscape rake at Home Depot or Lowe's. When it comes to size, uh, the wider the better. For lawns above 5,000 square feet, you can look at a toe behind drag leveler and the links to these products can be found in the description of the video. Step number one in the process to figure out how much area that we're actually going to be leveling, length times width or square feet. Now the easiest way to do this is go to google.com forward slash maps. You're going to input your address into the bar up top and then zoom in on your property. You're going to right click on the map and choose measure. You're going to do a series of bubbles around the area that you're actually wanting to level and it will show you how many thousand square feet that you have. Step number two in the process is choosing the type of soil that you're gonna be putting down on your lawn. Now, if you are just smoothing the top surface and doing that sort of leveling, it's pretty simple. You're gonna get sand that is screened at two millimeters or less. This is commonly known as leveling sand or playground sand. Now, if you're going to be amending the soil, meaning you want to change the soil, my recommendation, especially if you have clay, is to use sand only. If you have some sort of sandy loam or if you have sand only, my recommendation is going to be a 50-50 mix of topsoil versus sand. When it comes to ordering sand and soil, I suggest ordering one ton of sand per 1,000 square feet for basic smoothing or leveling. If you have a very bumpy lawn or if you plan on doing an aerification, and more on that later in the video, I suggest ordering one ton of sand or soil per 1,000 square feet plus an additional 10% more. If you're planning to do the lawn aerification and you have several areas of the lawn that need more than three quarters of an inch of height correction, I recommend a mix of sand and topsoil at one ton per thousand square feet plus an additional 20%. Now, if you're planning on raising the height more than one to two inches in large areas, please consult the topsoil calculator and you can find one on Google by searching topsoil calculator. Step number three is to scalp mow the lawn. Now, ideally we wanna get it down to one inch, but we can settle for two inches if we have to. Now, the purpose of the scalp mow is just to get the grass blades rigid enough that when we put the sand on top, it'll stay upward and that we can massage the sand through it, which is why the shorter we can get it, the better off you're gonna be. Step number four is dethatching the lawn or removing the surface debris. The dethatch aspect of this process is very, very, very important. We need to get all that surface debris off so we can allow the grass to thrive. When we have a bunch of surface debris, the grass naturally can't grow outward like it normally would. If you really wanna make this process simple, get a Sunjo dethatcher and scarifier. Use the dethatcher attachment to remove all the thatch. Now you're gonna to wanna to go over the lawn as many times as it takes to minimize the debris. If you've never dethatched before, 
you may have to go over the lawn four or five times to get it where you want it. And it's going to fill up the trash bin probably two times, if not more. After we get the surface debris off the lawn, an optional service is a lawn aeration. This part of the process I really enjoy because I have clay soil. This is going to help amend the soil. We take a lawn aerator and I like to do two passes minimum. After we do the two passes, we're going to remove the plugs and the sand will be pushed into the aeration holes in the soil, resulting in a soil that breathes better. Not only will water and oxygen pass easier, but it also helps push soil into the thatch layer of the grass, which is very healthy for the lawn. If you have the extra time and money to amend the soil by doing an aerification, I highly recommend it. With clay soils, we're definitely going to want to be using sand. With sand soils, my recommend is to find a sandy loam or a straight topsoil that you can use. What this is going to do for you is since sand doesn't hold nutrients, it's going to allow you to hold a lot more. Again, amending the soil is highly recommended. Step number five is to fertilize the lawn. We simply want to do this to force the grass up and through the sand. Now this also gives us a unique opportunity to do an optional service of a soil conditioner that's made out of both calcium and humates. This is going to help condition your soil. We want to be pushing about one pound of nitrogen per 1000 square feet of area. Now when it comes to the type of fertilizer that you buy, I'm going to refer you back to the instructions on the bag with how many pounds of product to put down per thousand square feet. Now the good news is it's very common for them to put instructions on the bag to get you to one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Now, if you ask me what my favorite brand of fertilizer is, it's going to be Propeat and I would use the 1704. Now, here we are on to step number six, which is spreading the sand. Now, I've had the pleasure of leveling a lot of lawns and I'm going to level with you. It sucks. <laughs> this is the hardest part. We have to take the sand, put it in the wheelbarrow, and then we're going to distribute it over the entire lawn. Now, what I'm going to do is almost a rowing fashion when I get to the area that I want to apply it and I'm going to take it and row it out. Now you can do it this way or you can simply dump the sand out and then knock the hills over as you go. You don't have to do the entire lawn at once. If you want to take it 500 square feet at a time, I think it's a great idea. Once you get the sand out in the area that you want, you want to make sure that the sand is somewhat dry. If it's not, it's totally fine to wait about 24 hours to make sure that the sand is completely dry before you start working it into the soil. Then you're going to go through and massage the sand through. Now I find that you're going to have to massage it about four different ways to get the grass to kind of stand up. Because if you've mowed down to one inch, it means you'll still see about a quarter of an inch of the top or a half inch of the top poking out. Now, if for some reason you've got too many undulations, you've got too many dips. Some of the areas are a quarter of an inch. Some of the areas are one inch of sand to kind of level and smooth it out. There's not a problem with that as long as you can see the grass sticking out. Now, I've pushed it pretty far at times by leveling about an inch. I still had really good luck but I had to be very careful. I used my Sunjo dethatcher with the tines to go through the sand to pull the grass upward. So if you've got some areas where you kind of want to rip the Band-Aid off and you'd rather just deal with some layering because you just want to smooth it all at once, there's no issues with doing that. I probably wouldn't push it past about an inch maximum. Now I can't stress enough, the biggest issue that you're going to run into is making sure that you're not suffocating the lawn. So again, if the grass is folded over and laid over, you need to make sure that you pull that up. Otherwise you run the risk of killing that space of the lawn. Another optional service that you can do at the very end of this process is an overseed. Now this would be recommended, especially if you're doing this for the first time and you've got areas that were pitted out that you're raising a questionable amount. Now the downside is, is you need seed to soil contact. So I'm going to recommend that you put down two to three pounds of grass seed per 1000 square feet, and then a secondary top dressing of either topsoil or peat moss to keep 
the seed to soil contact, but also to hold the water in. Now, ideally you wanna keep it damp for about two to three weeks at a time to make sure that that seed has enough time to germinate. If you follow these instructions properly, it's going to take about two to four weeks for the lawn to recover, depending on how aggressive you decide to go. This concludes my quick guide to leveling lawns. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comments down below. You know, I'd love to help you guys out. Until next time, guys, the pest and lawn ginger. We're slaying lawns.